Okay, here's the deal. I work here, Joel works here. Our friend Frank was downstairs, but I think he fell off the ladder. So you're gonna have to go down and get this guy. Any questions you have about the space or the mechanical equipment around here, you can ask Joel or myself. All right, on your toes. Ready. Hands over your okay. head, don't put yourself right, between on. metal and metal. Okay. okay. Nice. The acknowledged seniority. The more fires you go to, the more time you put on the job, the more you know, the more val valuable you are to a company. The senior man is almost like a, a title. Paul is the one who's been here the longest and knows the most about the place. Therefore, his knowledge is very valuable. So we all rely on it. Osmo's 10 minutes on air. All right, get him out of there now. All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on, let's go. Let's go, keep going. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's a great day, Daniel. Let's go. Fast, fast, fast. Come on up slow. 10 feet from the top. Hold slow, hold slow. Up slow. Five feet from the top. Five feet from the top. That's it. Keep going, you got it. All right, very good, very good. You all right? All right, very good. The one decided advantage you have when you're working in the company is that you have guys with different levels of training where as soon as you get there, somebody's going to know right what to do, hopefully. And in a short time, that'll be you when you pull up. This is not going to be long until you're the senior guy. It happens to everybody. We're kind of like lifers. People put a lot of time. Uh, I put a good part of my life in this fire department. That's for the snake guy. And it boils down to your rank, your seniority, and the most important thing is your reputation. Your reputation is the big thing. And it takes a long time to build a good one and you can lose it very fast. If you have a good rep uh, and you're respected, uh, that's basically the highest uh, form of praise you can give somebody, that he's a good fireman. Best job in the world. You get to drive the rescue. Doesn't get any better than that. That's the kind of people we all want to work with. You want everyone to be able to take care of you, you're going to take care of them, and, and together we take care of the people that can't help themselves. And when it fell down, one of the construction workers was standing by and it actually struck him. Yeah, Fuck back, boss. The elevator, five flights up, and then you gotta go up. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was to go, so. You never know. Hope we go to the next endeavor. Shot, so I can help. Thank you. That was Artie. He wanted to know if we needed a messenger van to get the guys back and forth to the community board meeting tonight. Hey, El Capitan. What do you think of the fact that Chatsy didn't shave this morning? What, his legs? Oh, take, take a look at the camera. Don't you think he should shave? Oh! <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 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 What an improvement. You're going through a meeting, so I'm not going to do nothing. God <laughs> bless you. Hey, give me a kiss, big boy. <laughs> Thanks for taking the stride. <laughs> 
Police say the fire was set at 7.41 Thursday morning in a tailor shop, possibly by a former employee. Fifteen fire units responded. Although Engine 44 isn't one of the eight firehouses the FDNY has slated for closing, it might be replaced with a squad company that responds not just to local, but citywide calls. Firefighters hope Thursday's performance helps convince top brass that's a mistake. 844 deserves to stay. 844! Yeah, yeah. They do at 8.30 in the morning. In front of the firehouse. Are you up and reside? You think they're going to let us start yeah, pine saws on the sidewalk at 8 in the morning? If they move us to the Upper East Side, which is one of their proposals, then Community Board 4 would have no engines whatsoever. The best way to win this is to hit the public, hit the council, uh, the uh, political activists, and do it that way, because that's the only way we're going to win it. So we are expect hopefully a big turnout of the community in support for 252. They're moving three firehouses from our neighborhood, not one in Manhattan, three from Brooklyn. This building, 218 Schaefer Street, has been burned down six times in five years due to arson. A man burned in that building, a Mexican man burned in that building. But they saved his wife and his three kids, this firehouse that they're getting rid of. This area is called the dark side of Bushwick, the most poor side of Bushwick. But yet they removed three firehouses from here. So tonight at 195 um, Wilson, we're going to have a, a, a community meeting and we're going to try to stop the removal of this firehouse. Can everyone please sign in? We're collecting signatures, a petition to help keep the firehouse open. Tienen que firmar aquí, tenemos una petición para ayudarnos para que dejen la estación de los bomberos abierto, ok? Gracias. But this is a big fight, and we're going to need the help of everybody in this room. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Federal Commander Coletta from the New York City Fire Department. Thank you. Anna Gonzalez, who's the chairperson of Community Board 4. Thank you. What we're going to do now is open up for questions and answers. The gentleman there. Tonight, a little girl had an asthma attack right next to my house. They called at 5 o'clock because I was right out front of the house. At 5.05, was there giving the little girl oxygen. The ambulance didn't come for 20 minutes later. Who else would have been there when, who's gonna be there when you take them to Manhattan? The gentleman there. Now, they gave us two reasons why they're moving this company, 252 from Central Avenue. One is finance, and then they turn around and says because of some terrorist attack. It doesn't take any longer for squad 252 to get to Manhattan, because you know when they left here that day, they were in Manhattan and died in that collapse with some of the guys got there first. So it doesn't take that long. Now, what I want to know is, what is the reason for moving the company? Is it financial or is it because of the terrorist attack? The mayor gave us a mandate we had to cut our budget. So the only way we can get the money that they wanted was to close eight companies. As far as I know, it's not a plan, it's not a conspiracy to, to no, deprive your neighborhood of fire protection. None were closed, I think, in Manhattan, so I, I, I just interested. Hold on one second. I am Captain Squad 252. My name's Ed Metcalf. I'm the captain of Squad Company 252, and I just like to... It There's a question that uh, I haven't had answered yet by the city, and I was just hoping, Chief Clutter, with all due respect, that maybe you could look into the answer to this. 1998, they reinstituted the squad concept, and they reopened squads throughout the, all the boroughs. They tried at that time to open a squad on the Upper East Side. They've tried several times since to open a squad on the Upper East Side. My question is this, how come now, all of a sudden, they want to take an existing squad and take it from where it is and put it on the Upper East Side. Is it finance or is it because That's of the terrorist question, attack? And I can't give you that answer. Let's take all these. I'll give them all? Yeah. It's going to tear our hearts out. But they can't take 252 from us. They can't. But I remember the first time I walked into this house. They were making it a squad. And they were looking for uh, lieutenants to come here. And I walked in and I just had a good feel. I just had a good feel in this firehouse walking in. This is where I wanted to finish up. 
I got promoted. I came back to the house. I got promoted out of, and uh, this is where I wanted to finish up my career. A fire is a fire. Um, a firehouse is a firehouse, and this is home. You know, you come here. This is home. Forty-two hours out of the week, this is home. What they're doing right now is tearing, them, tearing the heart out. Yeah. Unfortunately, they know. When I say they, the bean counters know that no matter what they do to this job, they're still going to have a hundred guys for every one spot. A hundred guys on the outside that want to be a fireman for the one spot that's there. It's very competitive around here. About getting in and guys getting on the rig real fast. And uh, when you're an old dog like me, it's it. There's a little bit of a oomph to your, to your stuff. You, I'm older than you, you old <laughs> ah, We're never going to let the traditions die. The traditions are in here or in here. But again, we're firemen. And we all do what we're told when it comes down to it. And if it does come down to it, push comes to shove, and they move yeah. us, we're going to go.